So this video is going to be about the structure of DNA. So DNA is made up of basic units called nucleotides. And so every nucleotide is going to have three basic subunits that make it up. So the first of these subunits is going to be our deoxyribose sugar, which we can see right here. And we know that this is the sugar because it has this oxygen atom incorporated into this ring structure. And so that's very characteristic of sugars. So this is our sugar. So the second thing we're going to have is our phosphate group. So that's off out here, and so we know because it has a phosphate in the middle, but something else that's important about this group is its negative charge. So this negative charge right here is what's going to make DNA uh, be overall a negatively charged molecule, which is important when we get on later into lab techniques and look at uh, things like gel electrophoresis and other things like that. So the last part of a nucleotide is going to be our nitrogenous base. So our nitrogenous base is found right here. And so this can be um, one of four different kinds of nitrogenous bases. So these uh, nitrogenous bases are divided up into two different groups. So the first group is going to be our uh, purines. So purines are made up of two fused rings. So one six-membered ring fused to another five-membered ring. And so the two purines are going to be adenine and guanine. And so the way that I remember the purines is you can say pure as gold. So pure for purines as for adenine and gold for guanine. And so moving on, we have our pyrimidines. So our pyrimidines are going to be these single ringed nitrogenous bases right here. So that's going to be thymine and cytosine. So going along again with pure as gold, if you know that adenine and guanine are the purines, then you know that thymine and cytosine by process of elimination have to be the pyrimidines. So Chargoff's rule, so that, uh, that rule is going to tell us the that the proportion of adenine in a DNA molecule should be equal to the proportion of uh, thymine in the DNA molecule because as we can see right here, adenine and thymine pair together in uh, DNA molecules. And so the same thing goes for guanine and cytosine. So the uh, relative amount of guanine in a DNA molecule should be roughly equal to the relative amount of cytosine because they pair with one another in a one-to-one -one fashion. And so between adenine and thymine, we have two hydrogen bonds, which we can see right here. But between guanine and cytosine, we have three that hold uh, those together. So moving on to the structural model of DNA, what the structure actually looks like. So this structure was described by Watson and Crick. And so they were able to figure out that DNA was composed of two anti-parallel strands. And so that means that these two strands of a DNA molecule are going to run in opposite directions. So to illustrate that, if we have the 5' prime end of this DNA strand right here, then over here, the 5' prime end in its uh, complementary strand to make up a full molecule, the 5' prime end would be down here. And so um, truly they are running in opposite directions. And so it's really important to remember that two 5' prime ends are never going to be right next to each other in a DNA molecule. So they're always going to be on opposite ends. So these two strands are going to form a double helix. So that double helix is going to look just like you've seen it in um, every illustration of DNA you've probably ever seen, that um, the two strands you know, twist around each other. So that is uh, truly how this molecule is structured. And so lastly, we uh, have our sugar phosphate backbone, which is going to be our sugar phosphate. So it's sugar phosphate backbone. It's going to be on the outside of the DNA molecule. And our nitrogenous bases are going to be on the inside, where they're capable of hydrogen bonding with their partner, uh, whatever that complementary base may be. I hope you found this video really helpful. All images, unless otherwise stated, are from Campbell Biology's 11th edition. Remember that if you are an enrolled Baylor student, we do offer free tutoring on the first floor of the Sid Richardson building. You can schedule a free one-on-one -on -one 30 minute appointment or you can drop in during uh, any of our normal business hours. For more details, visit www.baylor.edu slash tutoring.